at the clock tells me that we are now coming to our second presentation, which will be given by Dr. Heather Andrews. Um, she studied astronomy and astrophysics and did her PhD in astrophysics at the Leiden University in the Netherlands. Since completing her PhD, Dr. Andrews has gained experience working as a data scientist, and she currently serves as a data steward for the Faculty of Aerospace Engineering at Delft University of Technology. She will now introduce us to data stewardship at TU Delft, and herewith I'm pleased to hand over the floor to you, Dr. Andrews. Hello, thank you. Do you hear me well? Yes. yes. Great. Uh, should I share my screen or? You can you share your to... screen. So. Okay, let me see if you share my screen then. Thank you. Do you see my presentation? Yes. 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 Great. <laughs> let me put it full screen if I can. Yes. Um, so yeah, well, first, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. I hope that I can give a proper summary of how the data stewardship program has evolved at uh, Delft University of Technology. Uh, so if you have any questions, of course, you just let me know. Um, as I, it was said, I'm the data steward of the Faculty of Aerospace Engineering at uh, Delft University of Technology, also known as TU Delft. Um, the outline for today's presentation, I will talk a bit about Delft University of Technology so that you um, are more familiar with the faculties, the type of research that we, that the university does. And then I will go into how the data stewardship project was set up and um, what our work actually entails on a daily, daily basis. So, first of all, the university. Um, it's in the beautiful city of Delft. If you haven't been able to uh, see Delft, it, it's a, it's a um, very tiny uh, and a very cute Dutch uh, university city. The, the, the university has a campus where all the faculties are in. And uh, there are eight faculties. So there's aerospace engineering, applied sciences, architecture and the built environment, civil engineering and geosciences, electrical engineering, mathematics and computer science, industrial design engineering, mechanical maritime and materials engineering, and technology policy and management. You can see a lot of engineering in there. <laughs> it is uh, quite of an um, engineer-oriented university. Um, well, it's a technical university, just like, for example, TU class. Uh, we do have the faculties of architecture and industrial design engineering and technology policy and management, which are kind of in between. Um, they're in the sense that they're not like purely engineering, pure, purely technical. And a bit about the demographics of the university. Uh, it has more than 24,000 students, uh, more than 2,500 PhDs. Uh, several professors, the university is working also on um, keep on improving the, the diversity in terms of female stu students and staff and international students and staff, and staff. You can see then when you have the slides, you can uh, also see some other facts and figures uh, from the website. Now, uh, the data stewardship program started back in August 2017, uh, the, the initial idea of the data stewardship program at TU Delft was to create um, mature working practices and policies for research data management across the campus of TU Delft, um, where uh, solutions would be more discipline specific. And so the idea was to have one data steward, a so-called data steward person, embedded in the faculties, getting to know the research that is being done, understanding the data, the code that is generated, and uh, creating awareness about it, and delivering a policy. That was kind of like the, the first idea. The data stewards would be embedded in the faculties, and you would have a data stewards coordinator uh, at the library, making sure that everyone is sending the same message to, to their faculties. Um, 
So in practical terms, this actually meant uh, that our work involved creating a lot of awareness about research data management and how can research data management, if done properly from the start, can facilitate uh, the step towards open science. Um, so sharing data, sharing code. Uh, aside creating awareness, it was a, about uh, setting up uh, training, providing training to researchers, and establish workflows and practices. And most importantly, it was about delivering the policy, the faculty research data management policy. And a bit of why there was this uh, idea of setting up the data stewardship program. Um, well, it's an engineer-related uh, university. So there is a lot of data around it. There is a lot of uh, digitalized data that needs to be uh, well taken care of. And um, that, that, that was like uh, one, of the, one of the main reasons we, we have like very large projects that, that started recently and that are also coming up um, that deal with a lot of data, with a lot of privacy issues maybe. So the, all those big projects um, needed, needed also this type of support. Aside that, it was about transparency, increasing the transparency in research, and also increasing the efficiency when we're using the data. That is something that every researcher out there can relate to. <laughs> when you're giving like the, the, the data that someone else generated or collected, or a code that someone else uh, developed, you have to understand that. You have to make sure that you uh, understand the methodology, so you have to reuse that, that um, data, that code, to reproduce the, the research that was done before reusing it. And um, that process becomes much more efficient if that data, that code is uh, comprehensible, easily readable, is it structured, is findable, is easily accessible. Um, so that, that all incre increases the, the efficiency when reusing research knowledge. And um, of course, the, the other reason was uh, funders. Uh, well, everyone uh, saw, saw it coming. <laughs> In the Netherlands, we have the, the funding agencies, NVO, Zone and Bay, um, NWO, Zone and Bay. Um, they, they are aligned with the uh, European Commission. So, and the European Commission was already starting to push all this open science, um, all the, the research data management awareness. And so it was also, you know, thinking in the future, okay, uh, how, how well prepared are we to encounter this new, new requirement? Um, so the data stewardship uh, program was set up uh, initially the the everything was funded centrally so all the the budget came um, from uh, the, the the university itself not from like each one of the faculty the idea the initial idea was to have a uh, data steward working part-time uh, per faculty until december 2018 then the idea was to extend that uh, part-time to full-time uh, from January 2019 to December 2020, and starting this year, each faculty could decide how to provide further research data code management support. In that sense, um, for example, the, the development of the policy, it, it was uh, uh, very important for the university to, to have the, this uh, data stewards that work sort of as a consultant kind of person. Uh, we would get to the faculties, we would evaluate how, how the data management practices were, and we would propose um, improvements. And we would do that uh, by establishing some principles, some guidelines in the, in the um, aligned with the policy, right? Uh, what happened in reality? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, different faculties uh, adopted data steward, uh, the data stewardship program at different times. So the first faculties to join this uh, new new program were 
aerospace, civil engineering, electrical engineering, you can see more um, data oriented, code oriented type of faculties that in, in a sense could easily recognize that, that yeah, we, we do have a problem managing our data, our code, this might uh, help us in, in doing that or improving that. Um, and then the last faculties were actually like architecture, industrial design engineering, um, faculties where, where the research perhaps is not so much uh, data driven. So it was uh, there the data stewards had to um, do a, create a lot of awareness about what is research data? What, what, what is your output? What, what data are we talking about? Is a protocol data? Is, is a map? data is a design uh, setting uh, data. So all those type of uh, things, it, it was about creating a lot of awareness among researchers and among the support staff that, that at the end, um, the, the entire in, in structure of a faculty also depends quite a lot on, um, you know, all the, the support staff, the deans, the, the heads of departments, things like that. Um, and uh, so it was at the end of this this uh, part time full time uh, it it was a uh, it really depended on the faculty. Um, in in my case, I became full time a bit earlier uh, in in 2018 because also I started earlier. Uh, I started in October 2017, and in 2018. Um, it was already uh, full time. And then nowadays, uh, while well, for example, in, in other faculties, they didn't have a data steward in 2018. Uh, they, they still hadn't uh, joined the data stewardship uh, program. So at the end, the faculty now has a data steward. And we have all, oh, apologies if you hear the siren uh, outside my house. Um, but so right now, the, the current situation is that we are all hired by our faculty. Uh, so the faculty is accepted to uh, have the data steward as a fixed position in the faculty as part of the support staff. Um, and so we're still coordinated by the library, but um, that now all the budget, everything comes from the faculty. Yeah. Uh, I guess the next diagram summarizes a bit of how we work nowadays. So, I mean, how we have always worked. Huh? It's just now the, the, the only difference is that the budget comes from the faculty and not from the library. So we, we have to discuss a bit more in case we, we would like to go to a conference, we would like to go for a given training. We really have to like make it very explicit um, why we need it, you know, what's the benefit for the faculty. <laughs> um, but so we have always worked in like these two fr uh, fronts. So we have the university, the central aspect on, on one part and the faculty, the more discipline specific aspects of our work. Um, at faculty level, we, we respond to the faculty secretary. The faculty secretary is the strategic advisor of the dean. So it's the person supervising that uh, all support uh, for researchers for education is, is, is there. Um, and so we, we usually have like uh, periodic meetings with the faculty secretary to uh, tell him or her what we're doing, what type of um, problems we see, or yeah, what type of advice they can give on how to like uh, carry out certain initiatives, et cetera, or contact certain people within the faculty. Um then uh, in the faculty itself, our work is quite independent from the rest of the support staff. Um, but we do have to like uh, uh, interact, for example, with the contract managers who are the representatives at faculty level from the legal services at central level. Um, with the IT manager, the graduate school faculty director, uh, that defines what happens with the PhDs, for example, and the communication team. Uh, in the next slide, I will specify what we what we do with each one of them. 
Um, but at, at the faculty level in general, our work is very independent. Uh, we do not work within a team within our faculties. We're kind of like in between support and research. So um, we, that, that, that also gives us a lot of freedom. Uh, so that, that's also good. Then we have uh, at the university level, as I said, we're coordinated by the data stewards coordinator. Uh, the data stewards coordinator kind of like just uh, oversees what is happening at each one of the faculties. Uh, if there is something that could is being done at one faculty, but it could be applied to other, uh, that the data stewards coordinator also helps in coordinating that. <laughs> uh, it's also the person, the type of um, liaison person between um, what, what the feedback that we're giving about our faculties uh, and the central services such as the library, the ICT or legal services, or um, if we work all together in a given workflow for all researchers within TU Dell, for example, the personal research data workflow, uh, then it's a lot about, uh, it's a lot of discussion with the Human Research Ethics Committee. Sometimes we do it all together. Sometimes it's the data steward, the one that manages that, that type of um, conversations or discussions. Um, and then I put here separately the Valorizatsi Centrum that, uh, as far as I know, Valorizatsi is a, is a very Dutch word. <laughs> uh, we translate it to English as valorization, but I don't think that valorization actually exists. Um, but it's like a separate type of department within the university that assists researchers when uh, um, applying for funding, for example, writing proposals, if a, a faculty is going to be the coordinator of a big consortia, they are involved in the project uh, management aspect of the of the grant of the project and um, so we, we also have to like be there also in touch with them sometimes directly sometimes also via other services of the university or the data stewards coordinator so in this slide I put a bit what uh, we actually contact these um, departments uh, these services for so um, it's a lot about uh, being aware of the new projects coming in or the proposals that are being uh, prepared uh, so that we can like step in at an early stage and support the researchers uh, to think uh, in, about data management aspects right at the proposal stage. So that's when we talk with the contract managers, that's when we uh, go to the Valorizatsi Centrum. Um, it's also about knowing the services that are available or giving feedback from researchers about the services that are available for uh, data code management. For that, we, ha we are um, in touch with the IT manager from the ICT and facility management department. Uh, it's a lot about um, also coordinating training opportunities for the researchers and for the for PhDs and professors, we, we, we reach whichever scale is needed. <laughs> uh, so what happens with all the PhDs at university level that is discussed with the Central Graduate School, uh, if we want to discuss a specific training um, or, or skills that are needed for the PhDs, for example, within our faculties, then we also discuss that with the graduate school faculty directors. Um, and aside that, of course, the communication team that we we have to uh, contact them whenever we want to disseminate some news uh, or yeah anything that has to do with dissemination of uh, information or news. And then um, one uh, other thing to mention is that at university level, we also work a lot with the 4TU research data uh, archive. That's the archive managed by the federal four technical universities of the Netherlands, uh, from which TU Delft is part of. So um, here we, we also are quite in, in contact with uh, 4TU research data staff, um, so that we, we also communicate what type of things are needed, 
uh, from the archive for, for the researchers. Um, if there is any news, we also like contribute to, to that. If they need any feedback, we also contribute to that. Um, having said that, uh, here you have our pictures. <laughs> the, these are the current uh, data stewards and the data stewards coordinator. Um, you, you, you then you can also go into the, the links for the, the blogs that have been written about uh, how we have been uh, set up throughout the years. And having said that, uh, I will now go into what we actually do in practical terms. So I talked a bit about how the, we work between two fronts. So we're like in between the faculties and the university, uh, we do a specific work for, for both. Um, and so I will now go a bit into that. Uh, data storage support at university level. So first talking about how we work all together as a team into, uh, you know, whichever, uh, into all these things that I will mention. Um, first uh, of all, policy development. Um, the, when the data stewardship program started, that's when also uh, the idea of having a TU Delve research data framework policy was, was set and we assisted in um, yeah, uh, establishing what, what could be in, in, in the policy. Um, the the TU Delve Research Data Framework Policy establishes some um, general things for every researcher and every uh, research that is being done at the university, uh, stating that uh, we 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 support the the fair concept and the sharing as open as possible and as close as necessary. Uh, Dr. Type of, yeah, I'm sorry to. Uh... I interrupt. You have uh, five minutes left for your presentation, so okay. Just Thank <laughs> you. <as> you <laughs> prioritize um, your slides. <laughs> yes. So well, Thank you. Uh, we we worked on policy development. There is now a a software uh, policy two. Uh, aside that, I will I will go very fast. Uh, aside that, the um, uh, we also work together in the. Data Champions Initiative, which maybe you, you have probably heard, have heard of. A data champion is a researcher that promotes proper research uh, data and code management practices at research groups and also encourage open science practices. So it's good for the researchers to see that a peer, a colleague, is actually concerned about this matter. And so we, we also uh, work together in organizing events, talking about initiatives, news, et cetera. Then the training uh, that we, we do for researchers. Some of those trainings, we, some of the data stewards, we, we do the instruction. Um, some of us are also uh, helpers in others. Uh, for the courses provided by the library, we also have provided a lot of input for that, for that course. Um, so we're actively involved in that. Uh, then uh, research workflows, as I said before, if there is something that can be applied to all faculties, that's when we all work together into setting things up. Um, and that the data management plan with DMP online and, and all the guidance that you have to put in there, that is something that we also work together. Uh, also with the personal research data workflow. Of course, all of these initiatives involve all other departments of the university. We're not doing them alone, um, but we work uh, as, a, as a team. And uh, of course, events, feedback about services, and uh, we work on collaborations at national and international levels. And then at faculty level, uh, we do more things uh, that are relevant for our respective faculties. So. Uh, the first and main uh, point uh, of work is uh, to be the first point of contact for research data management questions, issues, whatever doubt that researchers have, they can just direct them to us. Then we develop the, the policies. You can now see all the policies for the different faculties, and you can see how alike or unlike they, they, they are. And it's they all have, a, I mean, they all start from the TSL framework policy, so they all have a similar um, base. Uh, 
Besides uh, that, we inform researchers about available services and infrastructure, and we provide project support so um, throughout the entire uh, project lifetime. So from the idea generation to writing a proposal, we try to be there for uh, creating awareness about data management costs, uh, you know, for uh, uh, researchers to think about data management in general. <laughs> um, then the data management plan, uh, per, uh, the deliverables about personal data or human participants, etc. And then in the implementation phase, we provide the training and uh, how to comply with the data sharing and publishing uh, regulations of the funder. And we also provide faculty training that is relevant. So a researcher can come to us and say, hey, uh, I think that in my group, the, the researchers need more about um, version control, a version control type of training. So then either I give it, or if I do not have enough time, I give it with a data champion or with, a, with um, another data steward. It depends. Uh, but in general, we coordinate that, we give the training whenever uh, possible, and, and et cetera. And then uh, assess the needs. That's something very important that we also do. We have to get to know the faculty, get to know what the needs are in terms of infrastructure, in terms of training, in terms of awareness, uh, everything related to data management. Um, and so that is also something that we do. And that also helps us to the next point. And the last one, uh, establish discipline-specific workflows and initiatives in, in our faculties that are relevant for our faculties. That is the main thing. And, and that is the end of, uh, of, of the talk. 